if you really go back to the uh, actually the late 1950s and early 60s, Maharajans used to be run down in Narragansett racetrack in Narragansett, Rhode Island. And they used to have big, big Maharajan. And we used to go down to Danbury, Connecticut and spend the weekend down there and had a great time. As a matter of fact, that's where I ran into then Father Ferris. And we talked about Maharajans and he was asking me, how come Lawrence never had one? Such a big parish, you never had one and whatever. And he said, I don't know, just, I have no idea. We used to run outings. Sunday outings, one one time a year, along with the clubs that used to be here, like the Dal Amma and the uh, Big Fire, the Shmanid. And then, lo and behold, in 1970, Father Ferris, he became here to St. Anthony's Church, Monsignor Ferris. He asked if he can get a group together and maybe run a Maharajan. He stopped my parents one day and says, how would you like to have a tall, dark, and handsome priest? as your new pastor, and that's how he announced to us that he was the new pastor. He asked my parents to be the, uh, the co-chairs. So along with many, many other people. Monsignor Ferris was a staple in this community. He loved the Lebanese music, and he represented the Maronite Lebanese community. He brought that to light. He enjoyed the festivities. He was all fun and serious at the same time. And he had a lot of ambition. He built the church, he took a risk, and was not scared. And he took pride in our Arabic Lebanese speaking community. He had an Arabic typewriter and he would type things for us in Arabic. The first year, the chairman of the Mahajan was Don George. I was uh, co-chairman with him. And the only reason I was selected as co-chair, I'm the one that instigated what I think I was anyway, with Monsignor Ferris when we were down in, in uh, Danbury. And I jokingly said to him, well, if you ever come to St. And he shows up the name. Well, he knew. I'll never forget. He was smiling when he came here. He said, oh, so now we can have a Maharajan, right? He was instrumental in driving that first Maharajan. I remember Donald George wanting to have more people involved as chairs. And see, everybody really was a co-chair. Eddie Hayden was responsible for the building of the uh, the bar and the things like that. Kenny Kellen had responsibility for uh, making sure that like uh, the gambling tents and all of that stuff was taken care of. We didn't have a field. We didn't have any place to do it. So we ended up going to Kenny View Lake Park and uh, we rented the ballpark. It was September 3rd, 1971. We used to load the trucks on Friday night from the church, and we used to have to take everything with us, all chairs and all of that stuff, take it up to the park. I've been doing it since the beginning. My dad was head of the finance committee for the Mahajan. My dad set up a system. We would set up a bank at each register and then have a, a notepad at each one, and we would give them a starting bank, and then every couple of hours we'd go to each one. They would give us a deposit, fill out a register, bring it back to the office, or in some cases, behind a tree, and we'd balance it all out, put it in a safety deposit bag, and take it to the bank. At a young age, I was involved in loading trucks on Friday night. My mother was in charge of the Arabic kitchen. My father was involved with the finances. I've progressed through the years, uh, participating in any way that I can. I don't book out any Labor Day because I know where I'm gonna be and it's, it's always at the Mahajan. The only problem that we had with Candy View Lake Park was that we couldn't have hot dogs, hamburgers, liquor, or chicken wings and those kind of things because they sold those in the park. So that kind of hurt our profits a little bit because we couldn't make anything, right? And we couldn't have liquor. So that was really a disaster. And the only other issue that we had too was, didn't realize it at the time, they allowed our people to go from the ballpark into the park at no charge. And the, the why I say that was a problem was a lot of the families couldn't afford that. The rides were expensive. This was supposed to be a family outing. So that first year that we ran it, it was okay. We didn't make a lot of money. And we didn't make a lot of money because we were brand new. We had no idea what we were doing. I mean, we had two cars we were raffling off. We gave stereo units and a bunch of other prizes and never raised enough money to, through the raffles and and contributions to be able to offset that cost. We made a profit, but not a heck of a lot. We would 
start on Saturday and we wouldn't end till Monday night. And I remember cleaning out of there till two, three o'clock in the morning and then having to get up on Tuesday morning and going to work. We never did anything that organized before. We always had a fall festival and, you know, but it was, it was a one day thing. It was never disorganized and there was a lot of risk. I, it, was, it was stressful a little bit because we had to buy a lot of stuff. We didn't know how well we would do. You're a church and you're counting pennies and you're putting out a lot of money. What if nobody comes? We'll be eating kafta for the next six months. Fourth year at Cannibal Lake was a total disaster. The profits for the entire weekend was $500. We ended up with a rainstorm that was actually, I would have called almost a hurricane. It was like a monsoon. It rained from Saturday night through Sunday all day, and then even till 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. Nobody came. So we lost all the revenue for Sunday. And then Monday, of course, we also used to make good revenue because we'd work till 6 o'clock. We stayed open anyway because we knew the weather report was going to change. People did come up Monday, and they were very generous. We ended up, I think, still making a profit of $500 because Cannibal Lake felt bad for us, and they didn't charge us the cost of renting the grounds. Plus, a lot of the people who donated food and stuff like that didn't take any money for that. After Cannibal Lake, we became like uh, uh, nomads. We had to find a place. So we ended up at the Elks Lodge in Salt Lawrence. And once again, started all over again because their kitchens are different. We didn't, we have to set up tents. We have to set up chairs, a whole bit again. And on Friday nights, we'd load the trucks. And on Monday night, we'd bring them back to the church and unload them. We used to set it up in the back. They were really nice because they did allow us to use their kitchen, which was a big help. So we were at the Elks for about a couple of years. Now we had to find a new place. So we ended up at St. Basil Seminary. I took over as chairman. Once again, it's a whole new learning process. Different kitchen, how do we set up? What do we have to bring up? How do we do that? It was all learning all over again. So we ran it up there for a couple of years and that was, it was okay. We made profit and as long as we were making profit, we were happy and the people, it was really to also keep the, the people together at a, at a nice time. A fellow by the name of George Eaton owned three parcels of land back in 1900s, early hundreds. He sold seven and a half acres to St. Anthony's, seven and a half acres to the Lithuanians, and he kept seven acres on the side for, it used to be called Eaton's Grove. So when, in 1980, George Eaton died, and his family approached us and wanted to know if we wanted to buy the land, which we did. And so we had this land for expansion of the cemetery. And then we had an idea, hey, why don't we run the Maharajan up there? Again, you know, we had to bring up stoves, we had to bring everything up, but we made it work. Everybody looks forward to it. And you would walk in, you would drive in, the cars were out the door, you had cops everywhere, and you would have, like, you would see a slew of people. And the most important, they used to look forward to seeing each other from year to year to year, looking forward to dance, even though there was dust everywhere. The first day, it was all grass, and then it would all be mud and dirt, and everybody enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you.
We had one building um, which we'd sell food out of, and we had a big tent for dancing. And said we had another building where we could count the money and then souvenirs. So we had these wooden structures that really just shacks. Everybody did everything. I remember one year we were doing collection in the middle of doing collections. Dad had to go on a ketchup run. So I'm like, I have thousands of dollars on me. We're trying to balance. And he's like, I got to get ketchup. So then he, had, then he had to run to Keeley Farms to get something. And it was it's just, you did what you had to do. I'll tell you a funny story. I say funny. The first year that we were at St. Anthony's grounds and we loaded the truck on Friday night and never even thought about it. We were on our way and you know when you get to St. Mary's Cemetery, there was that railroad crossing. Bang, the truck went right into the railroad. <laughs> and we were stuck. And, and by the way, we didn't have cell phones back then, right? Okay. And we said, what are we going to do? It's at night now. We're talking about 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. And uh, the guy was a great guy. Stop. Good Samaritan, if you will. And uh, we said, geez, could you do us a favor? Or would try to get in touch with something? He looked at it. He said, Take some air out of your tires. And I looked at him like he was like, crazy. I was, we got a load in there. He's like, You'll be okay. And I, I swear, all we had to do is drop an inch, two inches. And we just creeped under that bridge. I can tell you one thing is we, we didn't know really what we were doing with the bar. So we, they ordered tons and tons of ice. And it was a very hot weekend. And the, the, we were just watching the ice melt away because it was so hot. We didn't have any refrigeration for it. Uh, people... Um, just had a good time. It was just a fun time. I was very young. I remember I had my Fawn's lunchbox and my dad kept all the money in the lunchbox because nobody would think that the six-year-old kid would have the money in his lunchbox. But we did. Saturday morning was set up. So as I said, we'd get the trucks up there uh, uh, Friday night uh, at midnight or so. And then 6.30 the next morning, Saturday, we'd be all be up there, kids and everybody, setting up the chairs and the tables. As I said, Eddie Hatem had the bar and had to set up the bars and build right from scratch. Him, oh, and Freddie Corey, young Freddie Corey, plus his father, who used to work there uh, at the Maharajan with us. Uh, they'd build the bars and they'd build all the little uh, stands that were required. And it was they were long days, long days, because you'd get there way before anybody came. And then after everybody left, you had to clean it all up. And uh, the electrician at that time was a, a fellow by the name of Jimmy John. I couldn't believe it. He'd be up on that ladder in that tent so far up. And he wasn't a, a young man, but he was a terrific guy. And he set up all the electricity. A lot of the games were led by kids for kids. You would have somebody who was 14, 15, and sh he or she would be leading it for the six, seven, eight-year-olds. You know what I mean? It was their turn to experience adulthood and be in charge. I'm in charge of the game. And, you know, a lot of times, yeah, okay, this is a quarter. Ah, you can go twice. Ah, you can go three times. It wasn't, it wasn't to make money. It was to teach them the value of a dollar, but also go have fun. You, you, this, the church is putting this on for you. There were two gambling tables and the wheel. Uh, the, those I remember very much. And they did well. You know, this guy's out in the woods shooting dice and playing cards. And Father Ferris came up to me. I, I, I was president of the Holy Name. And he said to me, uh, you know, they're, they're gambling out in the woods. So you want me to go out and stop him? He goes, no, just go out there and make sure the church is getting a cut. They were playing with a blessing. I can remember uh, being at the grounds up at the cemetery, and it rained all weekend. Heavy, heavy rain. And we were thinking about closing, but the people under the tent were still dancing. The band was still playing and um, we just kept going in the mud and in the rain. So we had a huge migration in the United States in the late 80s and then in the mid 90s. And those two different migrations have influenced our Maharajan. Remove from our world the difference and hatred so that all men and women may live in peace and Monsignor brought a different flavor to the Maharajan. He encouraged the new migrants to come in and be incorporated and be part of the church and give their flavor and add to the community. Even though he didn't speak Arabic, Lebanese, he opened his arms and encouraged them to bring that tradition that they brought in. 
we introduced this thing that's called the Lebanese village, where we brought za'atar, made it fresh, uh, the way our great-grandparents did it and our grandparents. On the dome that we had, uh, we brought in the village where we brought some farm animals, just like we did with Daya. <laughs> بتقلي عملنا اجتماع بالكنيسة ونعمل فرق الدبكة قالت بتعلمنا قلت لها معلوم بعلم وبلشنا الدبكة كان بعد في الحرب الأهلية بلبنان قوية يعني وبالذكر وقت اللي عملنا أول حفلة العالم صارت تبكي هي وعم تتفرج ويقولوا لك لك مثل مهرجان تبع البك عاملينا مثل الأخوة كنا يعني كانوا متحمسين للقصة يعني وقت البرنا ندرب كانوا كلهم موجودين كانوا على الوقت عملنا المسرحية بيع الخواتم للأخوان رحباني عملنا مسرح عن هالقناطر اللبنانية وهالبيت اللبناني وهالإشياء بقى ليش ما بناخدهم على المهرجين ونحط المسرح وبنعملها كدبكة كأنه بتضايع ودبكوا الشبيبة عليها وكمان لأول مرة يمكن جروب ولاد غنوا النشيد الوطني اللبناني على المسرح الحلو بالسكتشات اللي عملتون انه كمان رجعت عم بتفرجي الناس نتفي نظرة عن لبنان وعن اللبس اللبناني وعن هالاشياء التردشن هيدا الفوكلوري انبسطوا بهالرقصة مع الديكور من وراء اخذوا فكرة عن منظر بلبنان عطادة هيدي كمان كانت كتير مهمة بالصيف ال 95 ضفنا الشاورما والفلافل على المهرجان، اشترينا مكنات شاورما، طلبنا 300 باوند دجاج 300 باوند بيف، كانوا طايرين الاحد على ظهريات تقريبا. فلافل got added again because it was in the old days and then it got added again into um, the menu. People used to wait for our kak and the ladies used to knead the kak by hand manually. We also expanded our sweets to add baklava, uh, knefe, as distribution was available to our community. We were able to bring more things from Lebanon. <laughs> The Mahajan has changed and yet remain the same. We had gambling and a, a spinning the wheel and a lot more of that activities way back when. But we still had the same belly dancer and the same ethnic music and the same classic food. We charged admission. It was very dusty, dirty. It, it was, we had to keep hosing the area down. <laughs> آخر آخر هيدا يسكروا من خيرا ورا التراب والقبرة بقالنا أهم أحسن شيء نصب بطون مطرح المطرح المسرح وقتا جبنا ريسايكلت أسفالت لحتى إنه المطرح العالم عم تمشي كمان ما طالع قبرة عمرنا مسرح دائم. We used to sell lucky sevens up there. You see, we used to have well, <laughs> that was a big money maker for us. We used to run bingo at the church, and bingo had these things called lucky sevens. And so when you were playing bingo, you could buy, they're a lottery ticket, basically. And they were sevens. If you got so many sevens, you were a winner and so on. And they'd buy them by the hundreds. But the problem with them is you have to rip off the tab. And the tab would go on the ground. So you got these, in the morning, it was thousands of these tabs. I mean, and we didn't, 
nobody ever thought about getting a blower, right? So to kids, we used to put make sticks with the needles in them, and they'd go around. That's what they would do. <laughs> As I said, the women were just absolutely good. They worked and worked and worked, not only preparing in the morning, but they were there at 8 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning, all the way through until midnight that night. They were very protective of their what they did. They were very meticulous with their recipes. They were meticulous with the cleanliness. They welcomed us because we were young and labor and we worked. Oh my God, I remember they had over 100 pounds of corn. Kids, all right, go peel those corns. <laughs> it was fun, but you had to pay your dues. You, you peeled the corn, then you were allowed to work in the American kitchen, not the Arabic kitchen, because it's only the selected ladies that knew the recipes. They took so much pride in everything that they worked so hard for. Our tradition and our culture is alive in this country because of these people. Think about guys like Bobby Danis, Joe Hatem, uh, all these guys used to work behind the bar all day. As long as it was success, it was rewarding. The work, you forgot about all the hard work, all the aggravation, all of the things that we had to go through. You forget about that because it was, it was well worth it. Everybody would come with ideas. I want to sell popcorn. Okay, um, I'll bring everything. Okay, great. At the end, we'd be like, okay, no, I want the church to have it all. I was like, yeah, but you cost you money to get, no, I want the church to have it. And, you know, and I remember the raffles. Oh, I want $100. Yeah, give it back. And I remember the generosity, like the band, you know, we, we would go and pay the band a few hundred dollars or, or more, and we'd pay it to them, and they would take, take it, thank you, and then they would go like this and hand it to Bob. Filling with pride, because didn't make a big deal, Don, I'm good donating this to church. Nope, nope. Too many people to name. We must have had over 100 volunteers, at least 100, working throughout the course of the, of the three days. We stopped going up there, quite frankly, because expenses got out of reach. And it was one major expense that basically killed us. The Methum police, they became very expensive because of the large crowd that we had. So we decided it wasn't worth it to do it anymore if we had to face that expense every year. We got to the point where the Maharajan was barely making any money for the church. So at that time, we decided, because of all the increased costs, to move the Maharajan to our church uh, parking lot. I couldn't believe we had it in the parking lot and how well we do in the parking lot. My current role is I'm in charge of the tents and the uh, rental of propane and toilets and dumpsters and more of an administrative thing. It was very successful. I mean, as you know, we made more money in those, the last four years or three years, four years in that Maharajan on our own church grounds than we ever made. It was outstanding. 2003, we had it only one day. It was across the street and the park. It worked out fine. We ended up making profit, but it was, and again, work, a lot of work. There was one year uh, we had a, a change over in the priest and we had a gap where we didn't have leadership in the church. Um, we decided not to do the Maharajan. That was in 2004. <laughs> And then we 
had a new priest that came, Monsignor Azar came at that time, and he brought some new ideas. He brought more the family feel because he was reinvigorating the Maharajan from scratch. So he started to give it a different flavor. So we really revamped our Maharajan. And year after year, our income has increased and our uh, visitors, our people attending the Maharajan increased more and more. We had to enlarge the parking lot a little bit more so we will have a better uh, space. And slowly we rebuilt the Maharajan to where it is today. So probably about, what, 25 years and then 25 years. Was a great deal of success. And uh, I'm not talking about monetary only success. The joy and the camaraderie and the fellowship that we found in our Maharajan was beyond description. I came back in 2016. I came also in August. And I still remember after that Maharajan and I said, this is not the Maharajan I left. It grew to be huge. We'd put the raffle tickets up with the gate, so getting people to come in and would give you, you know, information about the fair when you first walked in. We had a games committee, which was in charge of games for the kids, and that's expanded. And the bar and the gambling were kind of combined as one committee. The food was a committee, and then we broke the food into two, Amer American and Arabic, because it became so large. Um, souvenirs is a, is a committee, and obviously the entertainment is a big committee. And then, you know, facilities. Facilities is, and I will say it to George, it's the hard, hardest working group there because we'd have to start months ahead of time and order tents and sketch out where things are gonna go and how many tables and how many chairs and be agile that, okay, it rained, we need this. Okay, it's really hot, take down the strap. The, probably the most stressful and exciting one, that in the food, the food they have to start months ahead of time as well. So what to order, what to cook, what to with the menus. You gotta do all the heavy lifting before it starts. I was lucky. The night before I go to the bank, I get the money, I break it down into banks. From the Mahajan starts, I start, and then I stay at the end to, to, to balance. I think that we've kind of focused more on what is the tradition of the Mahajan, what is it that people want, and it, it's the Arabic food, it's the Arabic pastries, you know, those delicacies. Uh, that, to me, is the primary draw for people to come down. We get entertainment and the music is great. This is a Lebanese heritage traditional festival. So we're focused on the Arabic side of it, which is great because that's really what we're about. The ability to, to showcase that in the Merrimack Valley, that's, that's who we are today. And I think that's what's important. The thing about the Mahrajan that I remember the most was not so much the aches and pains of what we had to go through, or even the money that we made. To me, it was the camaraderie ship with the people. Well, for instance, when we, I told you we used to load the trucks at night at St. Anthony's. I'd have my three kids with me. They were all like this. Kenny Kellen had his three kids. And they were there with us right up until midnight loading trucks. They were there at the grounds picking up paper and cleaning up every day after the night before. The women, the women were just terrific. It was wonderful watching them sitting on these benches, cutting the parsley, singing. Uh, everybody's getting irritated with one another because you don't cook the way I cook. <laughs> you're from Dalai you're from Fini, you don't know how to cook. You know? But they all loved each other. They all got along and somehow we pulled it off. Rosemary Lahesh's mother, uh, Ann Asif, would cook dungeons of, of grape leaves for all the workers and pass them out. Uh, it was a very, there was a lot of camaraderie. I can remember uh, Saturday morning on the grounds, rows and rows of picnic tables and all the Arabic women picking parsley and talking to each other in Arabic and just one after the other and just rows and rows these mounds of parsley <laughs> making tabbouleh. And uh, it was just great. It was just, you know, to, to see that was, was a lot of fun and... Uh, Good tradition. When we first came, there wasn't a lot of Lebanese people here. And then I heard about this awesome event that we can experience our culture. So we were excited about this thing called the Maharajan. So we were lucky. We had our across the street neighbors, Rose Shibel, God rest her soul. 
she said, I'll take the girls with me and they can help with the Maharajan and we can introduce them to the Maharajan. Everybody was welcoming. They were all amazing. And then when the Maharajan started, that's where the fun began. All of a sudden, you see droves of cars lined up for miles, as much as the eye can see. And people were just coming in droves. And it was the most exciting feeling to know there's all these Lebanese people around in this area. You see the band set up and all the songs started and all of a sudden you see all the dust and everybody dancing and it was beautiful. It really made me feel at home in America. Thank God for it because it brings a lot of the people together, the people of the parish together. Very close, very close. I made friends when I worked in the American food. I was working in America and all of a sudden there's somebody I see in church all the time, didn't know his name, now I know him, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that, that's what I liked about it. Working together with Eddie Zaraka, who lived three doors up from me. Eddie Hayden, who lived in the same building with me. Uh, Kenny Kellens, whose family lived right around the corner. Getting to work side by side with them and actually becoming their friends was thrilling. I learned a lot how to be a good Christian man from men like Sam Amin and, and uh, Joe Hayden and Roy Bistany. They were the leaders. I remember Tom Tarnas, Charlie Tarnas, who worked very hard as volunteers of cleaning up, doing all that hard work. Lee Marcinic and uh, her, her husband, used to be like the banking outside, run by just the headquarter bank, we used to call him Roy Bistini, God rest his soul. The community is critical to our Maronite faith. The Maharajan, it brings our culture with our faith, with our traditions. They are very critical to our identity, especially here in the United States. Our Maharajan has become a staple in this New England. When you say Maharajan, everybody knows about it, from New York all the way, all along the East Coast, and now it is across the United States. In the early years, when we were uh, preparing for the Maharajan, of course, you know, the women prepare months in advance. Well, we didn't have what we have today in our church. They used to go to various, like the Azi Bakery, to bake the gak and bake the pastries. Uh, the women would go down to church and they'd, they'd cook the uh, the kibbe well in advance, you know, the kibbe snee. The people that we had in our parish that were so charitable, they just opened up anything for the parish. You didn't have to go there and beg them. All you had to do was ask them. And a lot of them, you didn't even have to ask. They would just... We're sending it to you. How much more do you need? What do you need? And, and even more than that, there was times like when we'd run out of meat or we'd run out of something on Saturday night because we, we, or Sunday morning, Sunday, we're running out. And we're, what are we going to do for Monday? They would open up for us. Our parishioners have grown and the Maharajan has grown with them. And they have made sure that they contributed very generously. At least 70, 80 businesses, if not more. They lend us their trucks. They lend us their facilities to store, freezers. Sometimes they send us laborers. So we are very fortunate and blessed. Weeks before you have a few, the department heads working and organizing. But then when the Mahajan day hits, all of a sudden you have from five, six year olds that are coming, running around with their families. We have people walking on canes that are still coming to help. And they even get upset if we don't give them a job. I can tell you one thing about the workers at St. Anthony's. We have so many of them that they just love working in the Maharajan because that's what gives them pride and satisfaction. Great people. I, I To sit here and try to name them all, just wouldn't do justice to the ones that I forget. It's a lot of fun because there's so much camaraderie and it's really wonderful to see everybody coming together. I've gotten to know so many people through the church that I didn't know before because I've had the opportunity to work with them at the Maharajan, and it's just been wonderful. It's a, it's a great experience. That's, to me, that's our Lebanese culture. I enjoyed working the Maharajans, and I work, they all say, give an hour. You don't give an hour, you give three days. You give three days. And my wife was big into it because she did the basket department. We, we had a good time, I, I enjoyed it. It was always something I enjoyed, you know, something I thought was fun, that always made me feel good to participate in. But we worked on, we became friends, and our children got to know each other. It was exhausting, but so rewarding. You know, we were a family. It, there were some people you literally only saw at the Mahajan every year. 
but it because then like you know my best friend it's such good memories and you know to this day I'm still very cl close friends with a lot of those guys and girls that I used to work with back then to this day I keeping the legacy my dad did the first and I missed one year when I was in college it took a lot of time a lot of work and that meant the biggest contribution of each person toward his spiritual home it made my ministry a lot easier people who were not lebanese it came we we did very well with them too they looked forward to it people say oh the, the, the mahajan has kibina the mahajan has uh, everything you know let's go to it a lot of the names you see every year we know the right way of doing things the best way of doing things and you know some years it'll rain the whole weekend and we still make the same amount of money and people still have fun. You just figure it out. There were some years they were calling for a hurricane, calling for a hurricane. Mahajan, beautiful, funny. Yeah. So God's taking care of us this weekend, you know? You see the kids of some of the adult leaders when it first started, now now running the show. It fills you with pride to know that, you know, you're, you're doing it for a, a bigger cause than yourself. My best part of the Mahajan is meeting new people and reminiscing with the old people that you haven't seen for such a long time. You end up making best friends. Wahib and I, for a couple of years, did, uh, were on the committee, shared it, and we were asked to uh, run the Mahrajan for a couple of years. And that was also great because we still continued as a group, not as individual, because at the end of the day, it's that group that creates this great uh, event. We all here for the church, for the mission of the church, and for the community. So mainly we were so inspired by the previous generations that have been working so hard to continue this tradition. And um, we hope to continue from generation to generation. And I have every confidence that right now all the children as we see are continuing. And if we all stay on this mission together, uh, the Mahrajan will last for years and years and decades more, hopefully, with God's will. For me, I think the Holy Spirit is there with us every single year. It works magic. It really does work. The, the chaos behind the scenes, a lot of uh, previous generations and us and everybody that volunteers in every event, nobody knows that behind the scene chaos. But then that day automatically just runs smooth no matter what. It's a lot more organized now than it was back then. But of course, when you're starting out, you're learning. You have no idea. You make a ton of mistakes, but we learn from the mistakes, and, and we got better and better every year. And, and it really got easier and easier, except for the, the, the manual labor. Like today, we don't, we don't take all the chairs from the church. and to, We have somebody come and get the chairs. We have to set them up, but they bring the tables. They bring the chairs. That was a lot of work. And also, you know, uh, we used to have to order everything Everybody had notes. Everybody had their own papers, and, and nothing was ever put together like now. They've got it on the computer down there. The real meaning behind that Mahajan is getting people together and having a good time. I, and I got to tell you, this, the other thing that makes you proud, I'm very serious about this. In all the years that we have run that Mahajan, I could tell you maybe, maybe, two times that I recall we had a problem with a couple of people having a fight and it had nothing to do. It wasn't, you know, dry. it was just a family argument and a fight. And even in those two arguments, we never had the police involved. The people took care of it themselves. When you think about thousands of people, never, not a problem. I mean, that is something. That's why when here at Lawrence, it's amazing. We end up with only one cop, one policeman, maybe two. My hat's off to the Lawrence police and the Lawrence fire for what they what they do. They contribute their time, basically. As a matter of fact, the policeman himself, he says, I love to come to your Maharajan because to me it's like a family outing. There is no violence. There is no problems. And that really made me so proud. So many people who have not seen St. Anthony on the inside they requested a permission if they could go in. And that really meant a lot that they are not here to, uh, coming for the Dabki and music only, but they are coming on a spiritual journey as well. It's a lifesaver for us. 
it, it, it's especially nowadays, it's the best event we have. We could probably go to five Arabic restaurants in the neighborhood and get the same food, but it's different. And everybody takes such pride in cooking it and they're making it special for you and um, just eating with family and friends and enjoying yourself. It's always going to be special. The Mahrajin is very structured and disciplined. There's over 15 different departments. So as we had new ideas added into the Mahrajan, there were new departments that were added in. There used to be a team of 10 of us to do the collections and now it's me and my wife. <laughs> so um, we got the system down pat. There's quite a bit of an evolution in the Mahrajan. What didn't change, I can tell you with what didn't change first, is the sense of community. The parish being together, that didn't change. Everybody looks forward to it. What did change is the businesses in our community, as they evolved, they grew in and they helped a lot more. Uh, and as years went by, people were coming from Lebanon, bringing in material with them, bringing in products, souvenirs. So we started the souvenir shop. Every Mahrajan, I think, improved a little bit. You know, the, we never used to have, like, the baskets. I think about the kids' stuff that they do today. Uh, we didn't have very much of the kids' stuff. I think it's, it's well run, well executed. Uh, they do a darn good job. Whatever the Mahrajan made, uh, financially helped us not to ask our parishioners throughout the year for anything uh, extra than what they were able to donate. What's beautiful about our church is generations and the traditions keep going and we keep them going and we're instilling them so our children can keep them going. The Arabic speaking parishioners, the English speaking parishioners, there's passion on both sides. You have good ideas, bring them in. Bring them in. I, I welcome the new ideas. I welcome the merging of cultures. So the fact that you care about it and you're passionate about it, yeah, sure. Please point out some things that you think we can do better or do it differently or do this. I, I, I welcome that. And I think that keeps it fresh. Because every, every year or two, there's something different. Like we started doing t-shirts a couple years ago. We never had that. You think the generation 30 years ago would do t-shirts, you know, that said Kefik on it? No. But now we do it. And you know what? It's, it's working. And it's, it's, you know, you need to stay with the times. We have a, a video shop in, a couple, we started that a couple years ago, and you could stream it on Facebook. You think my dad wanted to stream it on Facebook? No, but you got to keep doing it. So I, I think, you know, the big transformation in the 80s, big transformation in the 2000s. And that's how we, we're here, and we're going to be here in 2040. The Arabic-speaking people who have come from Lebanon and have come to the church and now taking a much larger role in, in the running of the Mahajan and, uh, and the administration of the, of the Mahajan is great. It's kind of pulling together all of the American Lebanese and the Lebanese Americans. Uh, I think that that's important, as well as our position in the community. I think that um, we have a big presence in the Merrimack Valley. And I think that um, that's important uh, to maintain that tradition. 50 years, I mean, that, you, don't, you don't just achieve that. That's a, a lot of hard work, a lot of people, and, um, you know, generations of people. I'm part of that. It's a great tradition. It's nice to see people coming back to the church, and we do see a lot of people when they come into the church, uh, come to the church grounds. It's just we don't have the... Uh, the space that we would, you know, that we had before. Uh, I'd like to see it maybe go back to the Maharajan grounds or some place that would offer more space for us. If we build another a church somewhere else, we should build the grounds, the, the Maharajan grounds next to it. The Maharajan is a place in a time where people from all over can come and have fun. They can reconnect. It's a good way to contribute and give donations to the church while you're having fun, it would be ideal to have our children continue with this legacy and shape it to what they want it to be. Our church is already small for us and the parish continues to grow, thank God. Ideally, we need to build a church that has a youth center as well as good religious education. And hopefully the Mahajan can help us rebuild and build a bigger church. We're somewhat limited, you know, in the in the lot parking lot of the church, if you will. Um, it would be great to to be someplace else. We have to move. 
we have to move. It's just we, we're, we're, we're landlocked now. Everybody says the most logical thing, and I agree the most logical thing, is back at the, 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 the cemetery grounds. Economically, it's tough. We're really at a crossroads. We would make twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 and be successful. Now, now, now you add a zero to that. We're at a point where unless we exponentially change it, we're not going to make more. The part of me is always like build and grow, build and grow, because if, it, you know, if we can share it with instead of 2,000 people, 10,000 people, yes, we should. We should. I want to show off my culture. You know, I, I, I love seeing them coming from the, the All Saints walking over to us and go, oh, this is much funner. Yes, it is. It would be an absolute travesty if, if the Montagnes did not continue. A lot of people give up their weekends for that, and it's an important weekend, Labor Day weekend. People like to go away and do things. So my advice would be to please keep it going. Be involved. I did. I enjoyed it. And, and that you got to be involved because that's the future of St. Anthony's Church is the, the young ones. It's your heritage. It's, it's, it's a heritage that I'm proud of. My grandmother taught me that from I was a baby. I have a responsibility for what my dad and what my dad's dad did to continue that going. St. Anthony's is a big part of all of us. I want to see the next generation of people who were my age when I started come in, take larger roles, and let them run it, and let them bring their new ideas, Knights of Mary, CCD, the Dupke Troop, all of those people involved in that tied together so that we're one church, we're one community. Um, I think those are the kind of things that'll take us the next 50 years. Make sure that, that you allow people to get involved and to allow them to change the Maharajan. They probably have great ideas for things for the future. Sometimes we get so narrow-minded, we don't listen to them, but it's time to do that. You've got to make them part of what you're doing. What's your idea on that, Abbas? You got an idea that we can make it better or whatever? Okay, great. You think that's a good idea? Go ahead and do it. You do it. You got the power. You got to keep the Maharajans going. The money's important. And I'm going to say, I've said this earlier in the interview. That's not what's important. What's important is the relationships that you gather in the Maharajans. You'd be surprised how many young men met young women. Either they, they got married or they became friends. I'm very optimistic. And we just got to make sure we set the stage for them to be as successful as our parents did to us. What we have to do is cultivate the ones that have the passion inside. And you see it. And, you know, when you see somebody 16 who says, I want to win my own concession. You got it. Here are the keys. Tell me what you need. You know, that's, you do that, you get the next generation. The new generation who wants to show their, their situ, that they're a good cook, go ahead, let's try it out. So the grape leaves aren't as good this year. Next year, they'll be better. You build lifelong friendship. You're a family. You're brothers and sisters. And everybody watches out for each other. It really is beautiful. We work very hard, and none of us wants to go home at the end of the night. At the end of each night, we put on an argile, and we sit there, and we just hang out just because we're enjoying each other's company. It's the Maharajan. You stay up for 72 hours, <laughs> and then some. It was very, very important for Dad for it to be successful. This is going to be you know, four generations of Mahajan. It's the simple things of just seeing everybody and, and seeing the priests as people. You know, that was an, another exciting part. You know, you'd, you'd, they would still be dressed in their normal attire, but he's eating a hot dog, just like, a, just like us, you know. It's not just the Maharajan, right? You, you could talk about bake sales, so the Lady Sodality, uh, the Cedars, Holy Name Society, which there wasn't a heck of a lot of us. But the point was, all of those organizations are the backbone of the parish. And it's to keep the community together. The nicest thing was you go up to the Maharajan grounds and you'd get people coming from all around the, st the, the state, coming from out of state, and people that used to live here, grew up here, moved out, come back and they see their friends. I mean, you'd be sitting there at the bar having a drink and you'd be hearing this guy, oh my God, are you, where have you been? You were in California, oh, you're over here now. What I think is so wonderful, I have childhood friends that I grew up with to this day at least 12 or 14 of them that we still get together on Friday nights. We go out to eat once a month. That's the community. That's the church. The church is where everybody comes together. That's what it means to me, family. Good family together. At St. Anthony's, your name, everybody knows you. 
they, they knew your grandmother, they knew your mother, your father, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins. You belong there. That's your home. The parish was very important to our parents and to us. As you know, with the Lebanese people, church is everything. St. Anthony is very, very proud to have as many people willing to donate their time and effort and energy. I remember, what I remember the most is as soon as it ended, everybody was exhausted, but nobody wanted to go home. Everybody was just hanging out and just, you know, we were cleaning up and hanging out and talking about what we're going to do next year. My children grew up in the church and they, they still have friends from the church that they still associate with to this day. I can't emphasize how important that is. I look forward to it. A lot of it is, is a tribute to the, to the priests that we've had serving our parish. We're a very vibrant community. There's something special about the Maronite Church and there's something special about St. Anthony's. I'm very blessed to be part of the parish. It made me a better person. It's part of who I am. And I don't think I could have gotten this anywhere other than at St. Anthony's in Lawrence. The church has always been the foundation for me. It's second nature to me. It's not something I think about. And I'm looking to, you know, pass along some of the knowledge that I've gained to others. It's hard work, it's long hours, but it's worth it. It's part of me now. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I am, I'm looking forward to it. It's a blessing to be Lebanese. We have a lot to be proud of. We have a lot to be proud of our native country. We have a lot to be proud of our American heritage here. And I just hope and pray that God provides the wisdom to our, our leaders to keep the church going, that it keeps the youth coming back to the, to the church and that the church flourishes. It's just a wonderful community. We're very blessed. Congratulations. This is it. Anniversary, happy 50th anniversary, St. Anthony's. We're the best. Well, happy anniversary. We're blessed with another 50 years. I hope there's 50 more. Happy anniversary, St. Anthony's. Thank you to everyone that came to support the church. Happy anniversary and great success with the Mahajan. Happy anniversary to St. Anthony's Mariners Church. Such a great community and 50 years. Going strong, Abel El Mia. Abel El Sene, and I'd like to go, and I'll give the hundred years. Abel El Sene, and I'll show you how to get the money, and I'll show you how to get the money. Abel El Sene, and I'll show you how to get the money. Happy 50th, God bless Abel El Sene. Thank you for your support over the last 50 years. Allah Yatil Aisli, like all the Shabab, like all the Yelly, say Hamu, and Jay Heda, and Mahrajan. Happy anniversary, Al Kel. Thank you, my uncles. Dan and Abe, Sarkis. Abel Kilsini, inshallah, the 50th year, we will be here with you. I'm very happy to celebrate our 50th anniversary. Abel Kilsini, ya Rabb. Abel Kilsini, we are here. Now we are here, then we are here, then we are here, then we are here. Abel Kilsini, God will keep you in this time. I'm going to take this time, 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 this time. نتمنى انه تكون اكثر من 50 وتصير بالمية كمان ان شاء الله ينعيد 50 سنه ثانيه لك عبال كل سنه ان شاء الله بتضل هالوجوه منوره ما من شي بالك الجميع عبال كل سنه God bless our beautiful parish and this community وان شاء الله على طول على تحسن مبروك ومر تانيا سعادة في الانيفرسري I was born in this parish many, many years ago, so I've been to a lot of Mahajans, and every year the kids are working harder and harder, and it's getting better and better. Inshallah, Abel El Miyya, Ya Rab. We see the people of the past, and we remember us how we were. Inshallah, we see the people of the past, and we see the people of the past, and we see the people of the past, and we see the people of the past. The community is not from us in the world, in the whole world. And God bless the community. It's been a wonderful weekend. Thank you to everybody that came. St. Anthony loves you all. Happy anniversary, St. Anthony. We pray and we hope our children and your grandchildren will celebrate another hundred years of a beautiful Lebanese heritage and tradition and a beautiful Maronite faith. Amazing. It makes you proud to be part of this community. We can write a book about how a community can work together. I want to say a special thank you to everybody who participated in this video, who shared their beautiful memories and their stories. I am overwhelmed with the support of many parishioners and many members of this community to be able to find 
a lot of information about when and how the Maharajan started. I am so honored to have been able to sit down with the very first co-chair of the Maharajan. I am so honored to have been able to contact the family of the first chair of the Maharajan. It was very emotional. I cannot tell you the joy on both ends of the phone when I contacted many other families. It's amazing. It just tells you so much about this community, about this big family. This is a big family. This is our daya. I do have a lot of stories on my own. I'm so lucky to have been able to participate in 35 out of the 50 Maharajans we've had so far. I'm hoping for many, many, many more, but I echo what everybody is saying. Hopefully our kids will continue for years and years, decades and decades, and maybe centuries, if God's willing, with this Maharajan and in this community with any activity. And I echo everybody, please bring your kids back to church, bring your kids to participate, to be involved in the Maharajan, at the choir, any organization at the church. This is our church, this is our community. This is our home, this is our daya, this is our village. So two years ago when I started working on this video to find out when the Maharajan started, I found out that it was 1971, but it happened to be 50 years exactly when COVID hit. We couldn't celebrate that, and we had to wait till the following year to celebrate the 50. But trying to gather all the information and all the material, all the media that I need to put this video together as best as I could, it took a lot of time, and I'm hoping that I am able to do justice for this video, only to appreciate everybody who participated in this video and at the Maharajan, everybody who worked so hard to get the Maharajan to where it is today, everybody who started it. And just like Ed Zarakit says, not much was available back then, not like it is today. And they worked hard to get to where we are. We are blessed. This is a beautiful community. Happy anniversary, St. Anthony. Happy anniversary, our Maharajan. Happy anniversary to our community. And I'm hoping for many, 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 many more years and decades to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.